Also, say what say what team you're on as well, and then we'll leave the experiences for just like two or three people. Okay. Uh, I will start with myself. And if you guys, you guys want to come in here? Come on. And come on in. My name is Jonathan. I'm the missions pastor and Elkhorn campus pastor at Westside Church in Omaha, Nebraska. And I'm excited to have you guys here. My, next. Yeah. My name is Jose. I'm the lead pastor at Providence Road Church in Miami. Um, excited to be here. I'm grateful I met this guy a while back ago, and it's exciting to be here with the rest of the PRC team and you guys. And excited for what's going to happen tomorrow and the rest of the week. Frank, um, Hello, I'm Frank. Uh, I'm here to help around. Traduce, uh, uh, what's it? Traduce. Translate. Translate. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> 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 you have been trying. I'll help you. And I hope we have fun. It's going to be a good time. And Frank is Jorge's brother. And he'll also be one of the drivers. Uh, so we, how many trucks are we having total? One, hey, two, Frank, three, four, four. Are you crazy four, like five. someone else? A little bit. Okay. Oh, jeez. We're going to have, listen, this is going to be crazy, just real quick. Not that crazy. Not that crazy. <laughs> we have four to five trucks for all of us to get in the room. Six people in the front. So we're going to have people in the front, people in the back. And on the roof. <laughs> the ground and if we need to take some of the stuff. Uh, the second day. Yeah, or, or maybe come back. truck come back. And yes. figure out, yeah. Yeah. Okay, my name is Jorge. Uh, I am in charge of the farm that is located in the community we're going to be at tomorrow and the rest of the days you're going to be here. So I'm glad you're here. And the community has been doing a lot of work over there, preparing your, your, your welcome and the whole visit. Uh, so we're going to have people there assigned to each group. People is going to go with a group of uh, coffee pickers and so, so forth and so on. So uh, I'm mainly in charge of farm, of the farm and the whole organization for your visit here in town. I want to say we have had a lot of uh, support from the people of the NASA clinic, the cook, and most of the people you're going to see working around tomorrow. Everyone has been very cooperative, very excited about you you coming here. So I hope you have a wonderful time here. And that's it. I'm happy for you to be here. My name is Ernesto Rolo, and I'm part of the uh, Providence Road Church uh, team. And uh, I'm excited to be here and uh, see what we can do this week for. For, for you guys. Are you guys on the coffee team or the coffee team? <laughs> <laughs> My name is Alex. I'm part of the coffee team. My name is Morgan. I'm part of the BBS team. And Lauren, I'm part of the BBS team. What's BBS? Uh, the, the, the kids. The kids. Yeah. Okay. I'm Larry, and I'm part of the coffee picking team. If my body holds up. <laughs> I'm Carrie, and I'm part of the children's team. She's a, uh, she's a director or leader okay. of the team. Okay. Uh, I'm Christina, I'm part of the medical team. And I'm Sheila, and I'm part of the medical team. Hello, my name is Jesse Crowley, and I uh, am part of the Providence Road Church team as well. And I'm the worship and missions pastor there, and I'm a part of the VBS team. So, that's VBS. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lila. Uh, I'm also part of Providence Road Church. Uh, I'm going to be with the medical team. I don't know which team I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> Take your pick. Okay, my name is Adriana, and I'm with a PRC group, and I'll go wherever they need me. But... Can I have her? No. Uh, yeah, actually, sure. Is that what you'd like to do? Yeah. Is that a no? Is that a no? Mm -hmm. Sick people? No. But, but the, like, blood, you know, blood pressure and... No, I don't need any... Well, you don't need to do much. You just need to push button. Because these are all automated. You know, but we could use a lay person. 
You know, somebody we really could. Yes, her husband is a doctor. Because you have well, you're halfway to your medical degree. You know the lingo. Everybody, everybody always asks you medical questions. Like they get my wife. She built for him, so maybe that could have translated. Right. Yeah. 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 Y
So I just sat in it and wrote it and drove it around the gas station. <laughs> God had been sent by an angel all the way from Houston to Managua. And it's like God was speaking through her to me the whole trip. It was unbelievable. I didn't see any of the countryside, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. I was talked to through her. If you notice, when we pulled in to the airport, everything was brown. As we started to rise in elevation, you saw changes in plants. If you notice the animals, they went from really skinny to filling in. And it says something about the climate that's going on here. And, and somebody was telling me about it would rain up here, and I'm going, yeah, right. And it did rain up here. <laughs> and, and so what, what you're seeing is several climactic shifts between we and the mountains and, and what we came into, a hot, dry place. And it is a cycle, but we're in the hot, dry cycle down there, and the good stuff up here. So uh, a lot of the plants that are here are found in the United States. So if there's something you don't know and you'd like to know what it is, um, you know, holler at one of us and I can maybe tell you what family it is. You know, there was crotons outside of where we're eating tonight. Crotons at home grow about this big in a pot. And the, and the, sun, the trunk on these is about this big down there right, where we're eating tonight. So and, uh, this is also is true for the insects. Yeah. <laughs> so you better be careful because two mosquitoes will carry you away. Mm. Okay. And there's some stinging. Okay. What were they drying in the dry? You know where they were spreading? That was coffee. Was that all coffee? Oh, all coffee. Okay. But the big flat places where they look like they had a big flat piece of cement. Yeah. That's where they dry rice. Okay. And that's what I, I, I knew they did rice that way, but I was wondering if some of that on the, the black coffee, things was bean. Was that beans? Yeah. Um, yeah. If yeah. you saw, if, if, if Fernando explained to me, if you saw coffee in the, in the white or the pink red bags, right. that would have been dried and bagged and was going to go. If you saw those black things on the ground, that stuff is still being dried, but they covered it up with rain. rain and rain. So it's still in the process. There's many steps in the coffee. And I guess you saw many people, mostly women, walking on the, on the road. Those are workers there. Normally they have uh, women take care of the coffee that's being dried on the sun, and also for sorting out the bad beans. So they employ a lot of women. The thing that bothered me when we were talking about this, he takes 200 pounds in, and if he's fortunate, he gets about 95 pounds. Good. That's that's a normal because you you need to peel it, dry it, and peel it. Yeah. So the husk and the water that goes out, that's the way it is, more or less. So the, the of processing you, could, you could improve it. Yeah. Of course, there's a processing that takes out a lot. So you see. <coughs> A big pile, but only about half of it gets to the product. Do they process. roast all that in Managua then? No, it's exported like that as oh, green bean. It's okay. Yeah, green bean, wrong. Huh? Normally, roasters, uh, whatever in Europe or in the States, they want green bean and they, they know the way they want to do it, the, how much they want it roasted and how the market likes it. And of course, they make more money if they do it so. It tastes fresh. If you roast it uh, beforehand, it loses the freshness quickly. So you roast it, uh, I don't know, one day before, before you, you drink it, mm -hmm. before you serve it. It's the best way to keep the quality of the, Great. Of the grain. Mm -hmm. He works in the roasting uh, business we have in Carazo. Cafe Toledo, I guess. You, you know Cafe Toledo. So we roast and we pack in one pound bags and we sell in the local market. And also we have been exporting to the States with Jonathan once were at one point. Uh, <laughs> Germany also we ex exported, but it's not normal to have a grind coffee exporter. It's not the normal. Normally they, they buy a green bean. Wonderful. Um, I just want to go over real quickly tomorrow. Uh, just and this will be the exact same for the next three days, and then Saturday will be the same as well. But Saturday will be a little bit different because we'll get done a little bit earlier. Um, so, 7 o'clock, you guys are responsible. I know there's not much electricity in your room for plug-ins. So someone, hopefully, you guys have designated alarms to figure that out, according to your room. Uh, but breakfast is at 7 o'clock in the place where you, you just ate. 
So 7 a.m. breakfast, and then uh, have, we'll leave 7.45, 8 o'clock for Santa Marta, and we'll do that. And all the trucks will just come right over here, and we'll just load everyone up, and we'll do what we can. Um, people sitting inside the, the truck need to be people who, like, Larry, sorry, I'm, I'm, you know, well, I'm not saying size, but like, I don't know, I don't want to, hey, I'm we old, can drag you behind I'm, that. I'm old and okay. fragile, that's okay. it. Just, just be mindful of those things for Gavin, okay. and trying to rotate through, um, because it will be bumpy, it will be bumpy, the roads will be messy, and we're going to be driving 45 minutes an hour up to the mountain and back every single day, okay? And that's Monday through Thursday. So basically, that'll give you three hours for VBS. Uh, in the morning, you'll be hopefully get there 8.30, 8.45, maybe 9 o'clock. It just depends. And then we'll stop for lunch. We'll eat lunch together. And then we'll go back to our groups again in the afternoon. The goal is to be done at, done at 4 p.m. every day. Okay, so we're done at 4. We're loading back up in the trucks. And we're back down here. Because dinner's at 6. Okay, so we got to get back down. If we get down at 5, that gives you, if you load up quickly and we get everything going, then you'll have an hour to clean and get ready. So dinner's at 6, and then we'll meet in here every night at 7.30, okay? To recap on the day, to share stories, experiences. Uh, Kat brought her guitar. Uh, it's going to lead us in some songs. Uh, Alex back there is the worship pastor at Miami, so maybe you guys can talk or something. That's the instrument sort of there. And there's some drums back here. Drums. I saw a drum and like a cowbell. And there's a keyboard. <laughs> Alright, we can go crazy. But we have a guitar. This is a pretty small room. This is what we have to meet in. I like cowboy. Yeah. Um, uh, so yeah, we do a little devotional every night in some capacity. It'll be mainly just storytelling for us to, to tell our experiences for the day because we're all going to have different neat experiences. I promise you that. Uh, and then we'll be done 7.30. And then I'd love for us to be done 8.30, 8.45 with that every night. And then lights out at 10. Okay, so if you don't want to go to sleep, you can hang out here. But lights out at 10. Uh, I prefer everyone to be asleep at 11 because we have the cycle and days and stuff. Um, and then Saturday is the same time of leaving, but we'll come back earlier. So if we were able to get back by 4 p.m., 3 p.m. on Saturday, because they, they, they have to go. These two guys are catching a bus. Okay. Um, and then give them some free time to go see Tepayak or the other okay. church or do whatever they want on Saturday. Um, so they have a few hours to do that before dinner. Uh, and then Sunday, we're going to go back up again. I know you've heard me say this already, but we're here and, and it's good to say it again. So uh, Sunday, we'll go back up. Breakfast is a little later, I think. Correct? Breakfast at 8 a.m. And then we'll depart at 9. Does that work? Because church is until 10, correct? Yep. Yeah. So church, ten to, church is from 10 to 12. So we'll go back up to the community on Saturday. And it's not a work day. It's not the EBS. It's not coffee picking. We're just going to go uh, be with the community uh, and be a part of their church. Yeah. And they're gonna, are they planning on doing anything? Or? Yeah, I think it's going to be a far away something. Okay. Forward. Okay. Yeah. So whatever, we'll do that. And then we'll come back and then just rest. You get to rest after that on Sunday. Um, and we'll just back up everything by an hour. So Sunday dinner is at 5 instead okay. of 6. Um, and then we'll do our devotional earlier as well, because a lot of you will be tired by that time, so I promise you. Um, uh, and then Monday, get up earlier, breakfast at 6.30 on Monday. I'll give you one of these too. I know I emailed to you, but I changed a few things. Uh, and then we'll leave from Monte Limar at 7.30. Right. Okay. The bus, right? Yes, I would like to get there like right at noon. So once you get to Monte Mar, uh, you're at the beach resort where it's just a, like a compound. You're not going to go anywhere unless you go get swept out in the ocean. And uh, you guys are free to do within reason, of course. Don't go too crazy. Don't want to get you back and all of these. We'll depart the next morning. Excuse me, after uh, that, are we coming back from Montelimar to here again? No, we'll go from Montelimar straight to the airport. That's, that's on Monday? That's on Monday. Tuesday morning. Tuesday morning. So Tuesday, Tuesday morning, we're staying in Montelimar, we're sleeping there. Oh, okay. You're going to have hot water, you're going to have electricity, you're going to have swimming pools, you're going to have a beach, you're going to have dance, dance, 
Disco, disco, yeah. no. disco, deca. Yeah, yeah. it's a uh, <laughs> food all you know all the time. There's food, all you can eat. All you can eat. It's it's an all inclusive oh beach resort on the Pacific yeah, Ocean. Wow. There, I think there is horseback riding, but you have to pay extra. Oh, they do have four wheelers. Uh, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We have the doctor here. Okay, yeah. She came to. Okay. 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 El es Jonathan, el líder del grupo. Uh, los muchachos son traductores. She's Hola. a doctor. Hola. 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 Me llamo Cintia. ¿Cómo? Me llamo Cintia. Cintia. <laughs> <laughs> She understands uh, English, speaks a little bit. She said. Okay, uh, <laughs> Dr. Mark Anderson. Right mm -hmm. so Thank you. So we took off the words. No problem. Great. Mm -hmm. um, Wonderful. Well, I, I wanted to start us off. Uh, can I? You want to share something else? Things? Sure. Go ahead. Uh, it's better if you wear long sleeves, uh, light, or it could be warm, but it could be rainy also, so it's better to wear uh, rain boots if you have. Uh, it's going to be muddy and wet and a little bit cold. Maybe not for you. They got so, five or six yeah, there are a lot of uh, mosquitoes, <laughs> not, not as in Florida, you said, but still you're going to be beaten and you, also, you, you could you, suffer a bit. You, here's one thing, I just want to let give you a chance. I actually, so I know so you got some mosquito spray and, and stuff like that. I also have apple cider vinegar. I got three bottles. One you can put down your food, it's really good for you, by the way. Very good for you, your internal flora and fauna. And then also you can take a paper towel. Put that and rub it all over your skin, on your neck, <coughs> on here, and that will help you with mosquitoes for about three to four hours. It'll keep them off of you. So, and I just recommend it. it's good for your skin. It's good to be topical. It's a good pH balancer. If you're not feeling well, apple cider vinegar will help you out. It's not organic. It's just the high-end store-bought stuff. But I bought three bottles. He'll give you. He'll give you the, the, the stuff made in a lab, and I'll give you. Great. Is that is that what you wanted to add? Yeah. Okay. I wanted to share with you guys from John 15. So we're going into a coffee growing area. They're growing food, and and uh, I think it's just appropriate for that to kind of be a theme for us this week of of growing and planting and nurturing. So I'm going to start us off in John 15. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my Father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. But apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, he is like a branch that is thrown away and withers, such like the branches that are picked up and thrown into the fire and burned. No, that's not what we want to do. We don't want to do that. We want burn. to mulch it, and we want to put it back in the coffee of field. Okay. It doesn't burn. <laughs> Great. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, whatever you wish, uh, whatever you wish, and it will be given you. This is... To my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. I know that a lot of you guys are in different places in your spiritual walk, or maybe even some non-existent, and that's okay. This is, I want this to be a, a comfortable and open place for you to uh, be who you are, but uh, also being respectful of the group. And uh, But I do want to share with you, I think it's really important as we are on a mission trip, uh, and we're coming to work alongside people, uh, and just in our, our spiritual lives in general, that we can't do nothing unless we're connected to the vine. Uh, we can't get the nutrition we need, we can't get the minerals, we can't get the food, unless we're connected to the true vine. Uh, so also just invite you this week to ask God, ask Him, to, like, begin to say, maybe I need you, like, or God, would you teach something for me? I want to share a story with you. The first time I came to Nicaragua was in 2003. Um, at that point, I was very far from God, and I didn't really care about being close to Him at all. Um, I didn't really feel it. And this girl challenged me right before I, before I left, and she said, um, uh, she 
said, I know you don't feel like you need God, but why don't you just try saying it? And so, and she said, why don't you try saying it every day for like a week and see what happens? So I did, and I left the next day for Nicaragua, and I came here. And I began to say, God, I need you. God, I need you. I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it at all. It was like this almost numbness as how I was being said, God, I need you. And by the fifth or sixth day, like, actually by the end of two weeks, like, I was on my face, <laughs> crying, like, uh, so in the same way, I just invite you to allow God to uh, be close to you, invite Him, whatever that might mean in the simplest form for you this week, uh, and that uh, we remain in Him together, I think, as a team, as we begin to work, and let Him flow through us, that we are His hands and feet. Um, uh, yeah, my hope for you this week is that you'll experience Christ in a new way, you experience the church and community in a new and fresh way. Uh, now we would see God's kingdom be amongst us. Uh, that was my prayer for us uh, this week. Um, how about we do this? Let's get up into our little groups of uh, VBS. Um, I don't know how you're going to work out. Okay. okay. Um, and then we'll just spend five, ten minutes praying for tomorrow, preparing your hearts and minds for the day, and when your group is done, you guys can be dismissed, okay? And I will we'll see you at seven o'clock in the morning at the, uh, at breakfast. Okay? Did y'all meet before we walk down there, or do y'all just walk? Uh, you know, walking groups, going groups together, there is 20... 25 of you staying here, including these two. So there's 23, there's uh, six from Miami, and then there's 17 from Omaha, and then 